imagine how exciting it would be to travel to outer space and gaze at the spectacular view of our Earth. Space tourism is going to become more and more prevalent in the coming years. And there are crazy possibilities, from converting the International Space Station into a hotel for guests, to arranging the first ever romantic date in space. Yeah, you heard me right. Peoples who are staying in these space hotels might see through large oval windows that would offer impressive views of the Earth's curvature, beautiful constellations, and the vast darkness of space. But will it be affordable only by the super rich and leave the rest of us to suffer here on Earth? Will it be safe? Or will the emissions from all those rockets literally kill the planet for good? Let's take a look. So when we say space tourism, how far will we actually be going into space? The answer to this question might not be what you imagined earlier. There is suborbital space travel and orbital space travel. Let's look at the lame one first. A suborbital rocket requires just enough speed to be able to fly to about 63 miles above the Earth's surface, which is where the Kármán line is located. The Kármán line is the imaginary boundary at which Earth's atmosphere ends and outer space begins. So once it crosses the Kármán line, a suborbital spacecraft just shuts off its engines and falls back to Earth. But scientists say that at the highest point of a suborbital flight, one can experience weightlessness called microgravity. A point to note here is that the spacecraft itself would not be floating in space but it would actually be in the process of dropping back to Earth. So it just goes up and comes down. So let's look at something more interesting. Orbital space travel. An orbital flight circles or orbits the Earth at least once in a stable way. To do that, an orbital spacecraft must achieve what is known as orbital velocity. Orbital velocity is the speed that an object must maintain to remain in orbit around a planet. To orbit around the Earth, a spacecraft must travel at a crazy speed of 17,400 miles per hour. It is actually this incredibly high speed which makes orbital spaceflight technically so complex and therefore expensive. And then there is lunar space travel which involves round trips to the moon. This is the most exciting of all. For the first time in human history, a lot of us would have the opportunity to travel to the moon. But sadly, even when it becomes possible sometime in the future, it might be affordable only by billionaires. Right now, the only obstacle to open up space to tourists is the development of a reliable and reusable launch vehicle. But things start to become even more crazier from here. For instance, the International Space Station might actually be converted into a hotel to host guests. It could be used as a tourist attraction, but guests won't find the luxurious surroundings of a hotel room like here on Earth. It was built for scientific advancement and not for couples to stay and post Snapchat stories. But there are also plans to build other large orbiting space hotels around Earth. These hotels could be lavishly furnished and offer spectacular views of space and Earth through 360 degree windows and cameras. The hotel could have all amenities like a bar, spa and gym. There could be 3D holograms, digital wall art and even robots. It is described as a sci-fi dream. If all this sounds futuristic, what if I tell you that one company even has plans to arrange the first ever date in space? Yeah, you heard me right. I'm assuming most of you know about the company Luzo, or however it's pronounced. It's actually the idea of a guy called David Mintz. Long story short, they now have an option to connect two like-minded singles who are willing to have the first ever date in space and have the financial power to back it up. It's probably advisable to split the bill on this one. Imagine if things didn't work out and they just broke up. After that once in a lifetime experience, they would be scarred for life. But let me dive a little bit into the grey area and ask why would people want to go to space in the first place? Most of us just want to see Earth from outer space and get mesmerized by its beauty. Some of us would want to experience microgravity and feel weightless and have fun bouncing around. Space tourism could also help us understand the impact of space travel on humans. Hmm, maybe that's partially true. But let's look at a more subconscious reason why people want to go to space. People want validation. Humans are attention-seeking animals like puppies and kittens. Bragging about your trip to Dubai is no longer a big deal. But imagine going to someone and telling them, Hey, you know what? I went around the moon yesterday in my private space capsule. Do you notice the difference? Will they be able to come up with something better than that? You see, flexing is human nature. So is this the reason why people want to go on space vacations? The truth is that it's a combination of all. But we are all missing on something huge here. And that would be the price that Earth would have to pay to withstand all these space journeys. 
Space tourism can be downright catastrophic to the planet. The carbon footprint of flying to space in a rocket is about 100 times more than taking a long-haul flight. This is partly because spacecrafts can only carry a very small amount of people. When a single rocket is launched into space, it leaves a soot cloud. Soot can accumulate in the stratosphere, where it cannot be washed away by the weather. There are also several ways space tourism can contribute to a depleting ozone layer. CO2 emissions and soot trap heat in the atmosphere, and rockets emit up to 10 times more nitrogen oxides than the largest thermal power plant in the UK. A depleted ozone layer basically means that greenhouse gases can heat up the earth more easily, and this causes global warming. This also means that we are letting down and insulting every single human effort made by every single human to fight climate change and reduce emissions. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin are flexing that their technology makes space travel accessible to people. But you should really understand that when you say the word people, you are not referring to the general public but only to billionaires who are less than 3000 in number in the entire world. Till now, no matter how evil someone was, they were all still confined to Earth. In spite of all our differences, we were all Earthlings. But for the first time, some of us are trying to cross the boundary and leave the planet. So it suddenly feels like they're abandoning us and leaving us to suffer for the problems they created. So there are definitely going to be some hard responses. So is space tourism a necessary and exciting scientific advancement? or the least sustainable tourism sector to ever exist, favoring the wealthy and leaving behind ordinary citizens who need help on Earth. There is really nothing to celebrate here, unless these companies find a way to yeet their rockets into space without murdering the planet. And we'll see how that turns out. Also, this channel now has a Patreon page. If you feel like supporting the channel, I'll be leaving links in the description and in the comments. Even your smallest contributions can really mean a lot. And if you like this style of content, do consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the notifications. So that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.